Well, what's up guys, Marco Tomek here from South Coast Weddings Academy. We're back with another video with a TIG root pass from my good friend Travis here. He's gonna tell you how to back feed by looking through the gap. I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to him now. Thank you, Mike. Uh, what I'm gonna be doing here is, is a 12 inch, a 375 wall, but I'm gonna be using a welding technique that was taught to me in about 2010 by uh, my superintendent, at, uh, Mike Ho. And uh, this particular technique you had to use at the pipe fabrication shop, otherwise you did not TIG weld there. <laughs> and basically what it's going to be is I'm going to have the filament metal up top here with the tack here. I'm going to be looking through the gap right here and I'm going to be TIG welding down here, feeding it, feeding it, and TIG welding that way. Left hand side, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to do the very same thing with the right hand side. Okay, so what I have here, I have a tack at 12 o'clock, a tack at 9 o'clock, a twack, a tack at uh, seven o'clock. I have the filament metal, the tack is on this side, I'm welding this side, the filament metal goes against that side. I'm gonna come over here, this is how I'm gonna feed the, the filament metal. So I'm gonna have my hand resting on the pipe here. And I'm gonna have my take torch down here. So essentially all I'm moving is from bevel tip to bevel tip, and I'm just, I'm just looking through the gap here. But essentially with this particular technique, it's gonna be used as a continuity technique and I have my filament metal on the leading edge. It is continuously feeding into the weld puddle and I have the TIG torch in the middle of the weld puddle and I'm just kind of pushing the weld puddle around. So the weld puddle, all the heat of the weld puddle is just breaking down the bell tips and breaking down the filament metal which is uh, being melted continuously. I'm gonna weld from about six o'clock all the way up to about uh, two o'clock or 2.30 or if the filament metal runs out, I'm gonna, once I'm done that, I'm going to run to the other side of the pipe here I'm going to reach over and now I'm going to pull the, the uh, root bead, uh, the weld puddle up towards me because it is easier to pull the weld puddle up towards me to about 12 o'clock than it is to stand on this side of the pipe and try and reach over and weld up to here. But also uh, when I weld from here to here, this tack will be removed out and I'll be back feeding from around here. When I weld up to 12 o'clock, this whole half side will be done. I'll now switch over to this side here. I'll, this tack will be out, I'll feather that start, I'll cut this tack out at 9 o'clock, I'll cut the 7 o'clock tack out, I'll feather the start. Now I'll be doing the same thing on this hand side. So I'll be welding, welding, welding up to about 2 o'clock, then that when I'll come over to this side, I'll thin out the start, clean up the top, and then I'll close it.
All right, now this uh, 12 inch uh, 375 ball, I'm, I have it on a welding position, so I'm going to rotate the pipe and I'm going to show the different. Uh, I'm going to talk about the weld basically. This is the bottom of the weld, this is the bottom tie in. Now, this is going up the left hand side. This is the side I started first. So, we're going to see the bottom, I'm going to rotate it very, very slowly. Now this was with a 532 filament metal. Uh, the 532 is uh, deposits more metal. Um, it's easier to use a 532 on larger diameter piping, say 12 inch, 14 inch, because you don't have to feed as much metal. We are, we are coming up to where I used a 1 8 filament metal. And I had it marked out. So about up to maybe about somewhere around here, I believe right here, it switches to a 1 8 reason why I switched is because I did not want a heavy buildup on the top because as you know, it has more buildup with 532 fill metal at the bottom, which is relatively uh, helpful. But uh, 1 8 keeps a more uniform bead, and it's also uh, less deposition in comparison to the 532. This is left hand side, we're coming up to the tie in. Also, you can tell by a little bit of the smoke here. We have the tie in there. Tie in was done with the right hand side, which I'll be showing here. We now have the right hand side. Right here, about uh, two inches away from where I tied in is where I ran out of filament metal and I had Mike at, uh, pass me more filament metal. This is right hand side. This is done with a 1 8 filament metal to avoid build up. Uh, I wanted to have the weld bead uh, relatively uniform, the root pass uniform. This is all 1 8 up here. This right here is 532. This is the lower bottom portion of the pipe. This is all 532 and this was done with the right hand side. And we're coming back to the pipe. I believe this is silicate or silicon. I cannot remember the differentiation between the two. It just covers the weld bead. Now I was using 70S-2 and 70S-6 for the 1 8 and 532 beads. We're back at the bottom. This is the tie-in. This side is right-hand side. This side is the left-hand side. And this is the root pass on this pipe done with 532 and 1 8 filament metal. With this particular technique, uh, many years ago, uh, Mike Ho, who was my superintendent in a pipe fabrication shop I worked at, uh, he is the one who taught me this, and I just want to say thank you to Mike, because um, this particular technique really greatly improved my, my uh, welding ability and my TIG welding ability, and it really opened a lot of doors for me. So I just want to say thank you, and um, you can follow me on Instagram at Fildres. Thank you.